speaking with Corey Wong on Jazz 90.1 as we wrap up. So Corey, there's been a whole generation of kids who have been affected by all of this, the pandemic and all the civil unrest. What advice would you give? We got Emily's 19, Tessa's 21, both musicians, both are big fans of yours. What advice would you give the next crew coming up? Any advice would you give them or ideas? I would say find something Find a vision to latch on to. Find something bigger than yourself that you can be in service of. Mm. And let that be a guiding light to why you do what you do. And it can be a little bit of a daunting task at first, but as soon as you find something that you're really passionate about, it all of a sudden gives a greater meaning and it gives a deeper meaning and a deeper sense of purpose in your artistry that goes beyond... Well, I want people to know how great I am <laughs> because that's a self-serving thing. And then also, if that is what you're all about, when people start to say negative things about you, it's going to affect you in a different way than if you are serving a greater purpose. If you are about, like you mentioned, civil unrest, if you are about the justice and uh, the movement for equal pay for women, and that's a part of your message and your calling, then that's that's tied to something bigger and greater than who you are. If it's about racial justice, racial equality, great. If if you're that that's going to carry you and that's going to be something that's going to be powerful, more powerful than, oh, here's me playing my music. Because it's something that you believe in and you can you can share and that that you can connect with that also will live on longer than who you are. If your if your purpose is I want to share joy to the world, then latching onto that and having that as your guiding light will help you to have more vision for what it is you should do and what you shouldn't do as an artist. If your purpose is to share peace through the world, then right, that right. gives you a better idea of artistically what you should pursue. And that's beautiful. That's amazing. Whatever it is, great. But I think having some sort of purpose and some sort of vision that's bigger than you mm. is what will really help carry you through the hard times in art, as an artist, but also help you find the highs as an artist. Because that's the biggest thing for me. Any of the big wins that I've had, it's always been about sharing something more than just Wow, I sold this many tickets. I mean, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Sell that sell out a big venue. But what's even more great is when you get off the stage and look out as people are done or like and, and just see a genuine joy on people's faces, people coming together and and sharing an experience and they they leave with a sense of joy. That to me, that's the most beautiful thing. You, you touched on something, Corey, because I just realized where you live, where you are living literally in the last five years, you've lost the city's most visible icon, Prince, then the pandemic, and then George Floyd. All that happened in the last five years. As you as a resident, talk about that, because if you, I mean, for us, we watch on television, but you're there. You, you lived through this, and as a yeah. musician, as an artist, I mean, how did that, you absorb all this, but yet you still have to reflect joy and radiate joy to give people hope? How do you do that? The fortunate thing in Minneapolis is that there's great community. There's a lot of great community leaders. There are a lot of, of course, there's a lot of bad people. And there are a lot of people that, and organizations uh, that need some reform or some, just a, a hard look at, in the mirror. And maybe not even them looking in the mirror. It's maybe sometimes somebody else showing them, look, here's what's going on. Here's what's happened. Uh, this needs to change. And here's what's going on. Here's what you're doing and how it affects these people. Here's something that's happening and how you might not be aware of how it's affecting this. Mm. Uh, that goes everywhere from the things that have happened with, with George Floyd. And it's also things even in other parts of the Midwest with certain companies or chemical plants where things are running off into the river. Where it's like, what you're doing up here affects us downstream. And yeah. yes, quite literally. And 
in Minneapolis and in the Twin Cities here, the thing that has helped carried us through is that there is a lot of community leaders. There's a lot of love within the community. There is a lot of um, reconciliation that can happen through the gathering of people and showing that people care. Because I think it's hard when there's stuff, there's certain things happening. It's hard to know, is there community around here to support each other? And then all of a sudden something happens and, and there is, there is a community of, of, of people that can support and help rise each other up, which maybe wasn't as obvious before. And that was, that was an issue. Um, not as much visibility as far as, Hey, we're out, we're here for each other. We care about each other. And, um, growing up in Minneapolis, I have seen firsthand a lot of the issues that, that we've had to face in the last, well, that, that have come to light in the last year, yeah. not just had to, you know, a lot of things that have come to the, the global and national light, uh, as far as what's been going on. I've been in the car with, with my friends and, you know, the guy that's driving is black and we get pulled over and it's pretty obvious that that's the reason why he was pulled over. And it's like, are you kidding me? You know, there's a lot of stuff I've been, you know, loading in our gear or unloading at the end of the night. We got done with a gig in downtown Minneapolis and, you know, there's five of us piling our gear back into our the trunks of our cars and the person that they walk up to, it's not me, it's it's the guy who's who's loading the drums who has dark skin. It's like, why are you asking him and not me? You know, it's... And we're, we're a band. We're literally walking out of this venue together. Why are you asking him why he's putting the drums in his trunk and not asking me about the guitar and amp that I'm putting in my car? You know, so it's like, there, there I've definitely seen that happening. And it's something that has definitely needed to be talked about. And now there's no choice. We've had no choice but for it to get to the point. Not Well, it did not have to get to the point where it did. But... What happened happened, and now we have to face that. And even right now, it's uh, the trial is happening. Right. I haven't seen what's happened in the last couple days, I guess, since Easter. But um, it's something that we've we've had to wrestle with, and we've had to to be on the lookout for. And like I've said, the community though, we look out for each other as a musicians community. We look out for each other in the community at large, and just hope for peace and we hope for equality we hope for yeah. doing for for people doing what's right for people in authority positions to do the right thing for for the right people to be in the authority positions for the right people to be in the positions to to make the laws and to pass the bills that need to happen so yeah i guess that's a long-winded answer to say oh, community no. is what gets us through that's, that's, thank you for saying that Speaking with Corey Wong on Jazz 90.1. Corey, again, thank you so much for spending time with us. Appreciate you taking Jazz further, taking music further with your hard work.